Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and today I wanted to make a video about a topic that I've been thinking about for a while and just something I wanted to put out there. I made a tweet about this earlier on today and I thought maybe, you know, it's good enough to go into a bit deeper. Studios that I think Sony should acquire for the PS VR, or at least looking at some candidates that I think would be a good fit for the PlayStation first party lineup and of course with a focus of virtual reality in mind. Now, what's got me thinking about that is, you know, recently enough, last year, not too long ago, Oculus, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook, those lads and ladies over there, they have been acquiring some top VR studios. We got Ready at Dawn, they snatched those guys up who had previously met a PS4 exclusive, The Order 1886. That game, which I loved personally, but it seemed to kind of critically bomb anywhere. It was like, you know, mixed reception. Ever since that game, Ready at Dawn kind of went into more experimental stuff, including virtual reality. And I think they found some great success over there with Echo Combat Arena, I believe it's called, or something along those lines. Listen, if it's not on PSVR, I don't care, all right? So the Zuck snatched them up. He added them to his collection. And now there was another one as well, another high profile one, probably the biggest one, Beat Games, the studio behind the phenomenon, kind of the phenomenon, 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 Beat Saber, which has recently confirmed it sold over 4 million units. Now that game was released on a multiple of uh, platforms, including PSVR. I'm not entirely sure what the breakdown is there in terms of which platform sold the best. I'm sure PSVR makes up a sizable percentage if not most it's definitely up there i would imagine it was one of the early games it's always in the top 10 selling playstation store download charts so it has to have been doing well on the psvr so zuckerberg swooped in oculus well, whoever did make the decisions over there they swooped in and they stole that one on us too now just because they own the studio doesn't necessarily mean they won't release games on the psvr and we've kind of seen you know with beat saber that was released on PSVR before they got boss. So they've continued to support that game, even on PSVR in terms of like music pack updates, they're still making money that way. In terms of features that they're adding, however, you must say that PSVR is not the focus. It's not the primary thing. They're very happy to release content on Oculus and PC viewer systems first, and then slowly working them on PSVR. Now, of course, that could be technical challenges, technical limitations, that's why it takes longer. So for example, the multiplayer updates, we're still waiting for that on PSVR. It's coming soon, and I've no doubt it's gonna be excellent when it does come. But I'm sure if it had been the other way around and Sony swooped in and bought Beat Studios or Beat Games, sorry, I'm sure they would have prioritized the PSVR port first and then the PC guys would be waiting if Sony allowed that at all. And then, you know, on the flat side of things, Microsoft have been swooping in and buying up studios left and right. The biggest one, the biggest bombshell in the industry last year, if you ask me, maybe the last 10 years, if you ask me, was Microsoft buying Bethesda or should I say ZeniMax Studios and all the studios that they own, which includes Bethesda and all these other studios that they, that was like $7.5 billion investment. So they have cleaned up on that side of things. So I'm thinking to myself, maybe between all these acquisitions, Sony are starting to get a little bit, so I wouldn't say panicky, but maybe they're weighing up their options. Maybe they're looking at studios that they themselves can swoop in and steal for themselves, if you know what I mean. Well, steal, you know, obviously it's all business. You know, it's no, no hard feelings one way or the other. But as a PS viewer channel, you would want, I would want, Sony to be swooping in the stuff so that I can play these games guaranteed. I'm not going to be mad if another company platform holder swoops in and takes a studio as long as they still release the game on my platform of choice. However, there's a, you know, a high probability that they will lock it to that platform, whatever it may be. So Sony have been in the PS VR game for about four years now. Does that make sense? Four years? 2016? Yeah, over four years now. And you could say that their first party output for the PS VR hasn't been fantastic it's been okay it's i would say better than the visa that would not be hard but if you look at things i mean if you if we actually just count the studios uh the biggest one the most obvious one sony london that's kind of the the jewel in the crown when it comes to first party viewer studios for sony they of course were there at the very beginning with the london heist and then they released that bundle, the PSVR Worlds, which I'm sure everyone and their mother got when they purchased the PSVR for the first time. You had the shark cage, all that stuff. 
And then a couple of years later, they came out with Blood and Truth, which was fantastic. So they're a great feather in the cap, as it were. You could also look at Sony Japan, kind of. I say kind of because they're not dedicated to the or they do other stuff. They were involved in Bloodborne. They seem to help out a lot of other studios a lot. Uh, but those were the guys behind, you know, Astro Boss, probably the best platformer of last generation, certainly on a PlayStation console. So that's two big ones. Now, they also had Guerrilla Cambridge. They, again, they didn't start off as a VR studio. They made a Killzone game for the Vita. And then, of course, they went on to make uh, Rigs, Mechanized Combat League, which was a launch game for PSVR. That game evidently flopped. And then Sony were like, okay, Killzone Mercenaries flopped. Uh, Rigs Combat Evolved flopped. Therefore, we're shutting down the studio, which I always I've had a bit of a grudge for Sony for doing that because Visa was a doomed platform. PSVR was just like a brand new thing. You know, I feel like they should have given them another chance. Maybe bring a Killzone title to VR instead of, you know, a new IP like Riggs or whatever. But for all I know, there was more stuff going on behind the scenes. Maybe Sony didn't like how that studio was being run. Maybe they were being wasteful. Maybe I don't know. So there's a lot of things we don't know. So I'm just talking as an outsider looking in, which is all I can do really because I don't have insider information, of course. And then there was this mysterious Manchester studio who had apparently been working on this VR game and we kept hearing updates for what felt like a few years, you know, they're working on this, it's gonna be AAA, it's gonna be VR. And before we even got to see what that game was, Sony were like, poof, you know, Thanos snapped, they're gone. So that studio got cancelled, that game presumably got cancelled, I don't think it got moved to any other studio unless, you know, Sony London are working on it right now or something like that. But from what I understand, that game is gone. So out of those four studios, two are left standing right now that you would say you would be confident would be continuing to make virtual reality games for Sony as first party studio. But there is one studio that I feel like some people forget about. Uh, which is kind of easy to forget about too because this studio also known for doing a lot of flat stuff especially recently but Sony's most recent studio acquisition was Insomniac Games now of course we know Insomniac from Ratchet and Clank we know it from Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales just came out so Ratchet and Clank is due out this year on PS5 but before Sony acquired them they were dabbling into virtual reality games over on PC Rift I believe it was and those are some really really you know well received games high production value polished stuff so while I have no doubt that when Sony acquired Insomniac their main focus was on Spider-Man Ratchet and Clank I'm sure that you know in the side of their eye they were looking at these VR you know projects that Insomniac were working on too and that kind of sweetened the deal for them or at least that's what I would hope keep in mind Insomniac is actually quite a huge studio they've got a bunch of teams and that's how they're able to release these games like in quick succession you know Spider-Man 2018 Miles Morales just a couple of months ago and Ratchet and Clank presumably well definitely sometime this year unless it gets delayed but you know this is all big games releasing you know fairly close proximity so I would be hoping that Sony have these guys you know behind the scenes working on a PS Viewer title or maybe a PS Viewer 2 title. I guess this whole video kind of hinges on the possibility or working under the assumption that there is a PS Viewer 2 and that that is going to come out 2022, 2023, something like that. Otherwise this video is a waste of time. If you're watching this in the future, it's 2025 and there's no PS Viewer 2, you go ahead and click off now, hit the download button, whatever, be it. Thanks for watching, I guess. So with all that preamble, out of the way I'd like to get into these five studios that I've been thinking about that I've been you know I've been trying to carefully think about certain studios I don't want to just you know Google a list of studios and say yes this yes 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 these are all good studios the more studios the better no I think they have to be pretty intelligent I think they have to fit with Sony to a certain degree with their um, ethos or their wheelhouse or they could fill certain gaps that Sony's first party currently has uh, so these are the kind of things I'm working with, you know, not just Sony acquiring these things, uh, but what they can bring to the table, how Sony can benefit from them, and maybe how they can benefit from being acquired by a big publisher like Sony or a big platform holder like Sony. So with that out of the way, I think my first choice is probably going to be obvious to anyone who's been watching this channel for uh, any amount of time. First Contact Entertainment. These guys, obviously, behind Firewall Zero Hour, this channel, basically the foundation of this channel. And before I go on any further, I should say that I am a community moderator for First Contact Entertainment, even though I don't do a tap. 
Uh, but I should just say that's just in case, you know, there's bias or whatever going on. But the whole reason I like First Contact Entertainment so much is because they made a fantastic game that I like so much, Firewall Zero Hour. By the way, Solaris, on the way. Spring 2021, I can't comment on the quality of that game. Yeah, it looks fun, but I can, I've can i only watched it because it has been only on the PC viewer and Quest platforms, as I'm sure you're all aware, so that's something i got to waste and see. But what I do know is Firewall, excellent game, and I do believe they would be, you know, a nice feather in the cap. I should I should stop saying feather in the cap, but you know, we need feathers in Sony's cap. Uh, they would be an excellent feather in the cap for Sony. Why do I think that? Well, I think Firewall has done something that very few virtual reality games have done, and that is they've created this multiplayer game, virtual reality only. You know, you can't play crossplay with flat gamers or anything like that. And what they've done is they've made a successful game. You know, I could matchmake right now, game came out in 2018, you know, we're pushing two and a half years and I can find a game within a relatively reasonable amount of time. Now, it's not as quick as it was when it came out, but it's compared to other games where you just will not find a game at all. So for example, Rigs, when I bought Rigs, which was my a launch game, I bought that when I got the PS Viewer at launch, in its prime, supposedly, I could never get a full 3v3. It was always me with two bots on my team, versus two dudes with one boss. There was never a fault, no matter how many times I searched. Whether that was a matchmaking issue or whether that was just the tiny player base of rigs, I'm not too sure what the reason was behind that. But not an issue I've had with Firewall. Now, of course, it helps that I have a squad of friends who have met just from streaming on this channel. And it's pretty easy for me to gather a team together and then matchmake against another squad. But the point still stands. Firewall has been a success. And I would say, you know, if you look at Sony first party titles, if you look at the, the kind of content they're putting out in their games, like the likes of The Last of Us, God of War, whatever, big thing that they all have in common, they're these story driven single player games. Some of them are short, some of them are long, and like they're not all the same, even though they got a lot of flack for being all the same. But you know, God of War is completely different to The Last of Us, which is completely different to Horizon Zero Dawn in my opinion, but they've been severely lacking in the multiplayer department. They've been relying on third-party releases uh, to fill that gap, and that's worked well for them. Call of Duty is always going to do well. You know, Apex Legends, whatever the fad is now, or whatever the hot thing is. So what we need is a firewall to fill the gap, you know? A SOCOM for virtual reality, which is what they can bring, and literally they could bring that if they were to acquire First Contact Entertainment. They could say, okay, here's the SOCOM IP, or here's the Siphon Filter IP, whatever IP they want. Or if they could keep continue on with Firewall because they do own the Firewall IP from what I understand. And I think that will be an excellent addition uh, for Sony's first party lineup. And I think if a PSVR 2 is going to happen and if I hear, okay, PSVR 2 is coming, but what games, you know? And then I hear that, oh, they've acquired First Contact Entertainment. I'm going to be guaranteed an excellent game from them if it's anything like Firewall anyway. An improvement on Firewall, which is naturally what would happen. Better hardware, more time, more experience. Now, of course, that's not to say that First Contact even want to be acquired or whatever, but I'm just operating under the assumption that Sony is coming along, offering a blank check. These studios are like, okay, Here's the number, take us, you know, take us away to Japan or whatever. So that's my first pick, First Contact Entertainment. My next pick is something maybe you wouldn't expect. Maybe it wasn't something I was expecting when I was thinking of these studios. But the next one is Rec Room Incorporated. Now, first of all, I didn't know they had changed their name to Rec Room Incorporated. They used to be against Gravity, but now they're their own thing, Rec Room Incorporated. And I guess they're 100% behind Rec Room, which is that free to play game that I mean, I used to play it back on this channel, even before Firewall was a thing, I was streaming Rec Room, I was making stupid Rec Room videos. That game, very popular, it has cross-platform support, free to play, which is like a big reason for its success. And, you know, it has since gone flat and it has included PS4, Xbox, you know, PC, probably, I don't know, can you run it on your phones now as well, something like that. It's like everywhere. So why would Rec Room Inc. be a good fit for Sony? So the reason I believe that is, you know, again, kind of fits a niche that Sony doesn't have, really. Uh, it's hard to define what Rec Room is in terms of the genre. You know, it's it's online. Online what, though? You know, it's just kind of a social hub. But there's games, there's a Battle Royale mode in there, there's disc golf, there's all kinds of... And that's since the last time I played. Who knows what's there now, because I haven't touched it in so long. So it is hard to define what Rec Room is, but it is a jack of all trades, and it does online and does cross-play. And if Sony were to buy, you know, Rec Room Inc., I would hope and I would expect that they would keep, 
you know, all the cross-platform stuff there. There's no need to cut off the player base. It would only benefit Sony for having more players playing that game in terms of, you know, the microtransactions coming in or whatever. I believe you can buy tokens in that game, if I am not mistaken. So again, if I want to buy a PS or 2 and I hear, oh, you know, Rec Room Inc. are working on a new project and it's going to be, you know, not necessarily MMO, but it's going to be fairly large scale, multiplayer, social type interaction. I would be kind of excited for that. I'd be pretty excited for that. And even if it wasn't my cup of tea, I think it would be a lot of people's cup of tea as evidenced by the amount of players playing that game. Even if it is child friendly the way that Rec Room is now, bring in those Roblox kids, bring in those Minecraft kids, you know, get in there, get them into virtual reality, get them a reason to game, start them young. And then, you know, this is how you move headsets. You know, that's my thinking, honest, anyway. This video has gone on way too long. So let me move on to number three, fast travel games. So fast travel games, if you've been to paying attention to fast travel games, which I've been keeping my eye on them recently because I'm very much looking forward to Wraith, uh, The Oblivion, which is their upcoming horror game coming supposedly spring 2021. A lot of good games come in spring 2021, apparently. So the thing about fast travel games is, is that they already fit in very nicely with how Sony's studios are right now. You know, single player games, story focused. They've recently moved into a new studio location because they're expanding. They've been hiring people left and right now. I think they're planning on pu pumping, like really increasing the quantity of titles that they're pumping out, uh, the frequency of content and titles that they're putting out. Already in the past, they've had some bangers. Apex Construct, pretty solid title, which was an early one on PSVR and the other platforms as well, I believe. Hit the curious case of the stolen pets, if I'm saying that title correctly, I hope. That was a shorter experience, but you know, it's something completely different. Single player, still well received. They really used virtual reality in a, you know, they really took advantage of virtual reality in that game where it was like a diorama and you were twisting it around and stuff like that. And then there's the upcoming Wraith, which I hope they nail, you know, a horror game in virtual reality. I think is probably hard to mess up because virtual reality is just going to intensify the horror like by 100, just by default. So I do have high hopes for Wraith, the Oblivion. And just another thing to know as well is that the Wraith, the Oblivion, that game is part of a World of Darkness franchise. So, you know, I was wondering Maybe they went that route, going with an established IP instead of going with a new IP for that extra bit of security. So if Sony come along, maybe Sony can add that bit of security by purchasing them or acquiring them. Not guaranteed, of course. Look at Guerrilla Cambridge. Look at that Manchester studio. Not really that much more security, but maybe with an established studio with a proven track record, you know, Sony might be more lenient there, might be willing to give them more, more leeway. And I do think Fast Travel Games is a studio that's going to become more and more well recognized as the years go on, as these games start coming out. So my fourth choice then is Servios. And the big reason why I'm thinking Servios, even though I do believe Servios have never really hit greatness. I think they've come close. I think they're knocking at the door of greatness. But they've never like released a game where I was like, oh, I need to have this right now. They've released a lot of games where I was like, oh, I'd like to play this. Maybe when it goes on sale, something like that. But to their credits and their biggest pro, I would say, is just the, the quantity of games the studio is able to pump out. I don't know how. I don't know how big the studio is. But they've been pumping out so many games in such a short period of time. You know, there's Creed, Rise to Glory, Battle Wake. Recently, The Walking Dead Onslaught just came out. And then, you know, that was badly received at first. But then almost immediately, they had a huge balance patch that seemed to fix, not necessarily fix, but, you know, improve the situation quite a good bit. You know, they had the early one, Raw Data. They had, you know, Westworld, that kind of arcade experience thing. I don't think it ever released on PSVR anyway, but they made some kind of Westworld viewer experience. Uh, there's another one, Sprint Vector. Another one that a lot of people consider underrated, but like an utterly unique virtual reality game. Servios pumped out, I would say, probably more games than virtual reality games in a small amount of time or a certain period of time than any other studio that I can think of. It's kind of insane. So if Sony were able to bag them, then you're talking about increasing the quantity of first party games considerably, you know, as long as Sony wouldn't interfere too much with the development process if they let them have free-ish reign, you know. And then maybe with Sony's help, with their expertise, maybe a little collaborations with other studios or whatever, maybe an acquisition like that could just give Servios that little, little push that they need to hit those heights that I think they've nearly hit and that they're very close to hitting. 
maybe Sony could do that. My final pick then is Impulse Gear. They're kind of the opposite of Servios in that they've released this one game. Great game, I would say. If not great, then very, very close to great. You know, fair point. But then they've gone completely dark until a couple of months ago. Was it December? I can't remember exactly when. Uh, but they said, hey, we're working on something. It's virtual reality related. Keep your eyes peeled. We'll say more in the future. So they're working on something that's been finally been confirmed. We all hope it's fair point too. At least I do. Uh, although it's still be interesting to see a new IP. What I really hope is that it is a on a PlayStation platform. It's not going to be PC viewer exclusive, you know. And of course, the thing with Impulse Gear is, and why I think they'd be such a good fit for Sony, is that these guys were the creators practically of the aim controller. They wanted a proper gun controller for Farpoint. They wanted to work with Sony to make that happen. So they built up this great relationship with each other, uh, which you would imagine they would have to to make hardware for their platform, which has since been gone on to be used by so many of the great games like Firewall. Would Firewall be half as fun if we were forced to use the DualShock? I think the aim controller adds so much and we have Impulse Gear to thank for that. So yeah, you would imagine Impulse Gear have like a very intimate knowledge when it comes to PlayStation hardware, PSVR hardware, and if need be, could work on a new aim controller for PSVR 2. You know, let's get some haptics in there, let's get some adaptive triggers in there, let's get some crazy stuff, get rid of the ball at the front. We don't want light tracking anymore. Anyway, that's that's a different story. That's a different you know video altogether. But the point is that I think Impulse Gear I would love to see them work on a Fairpoint 2, a greatly expanded Fairpoint 2. But yeah, those are my five studios that I think Sony would do well to snatch up. Now, obviously, they're not going to, they're probably not going to snatch up any of these studios, but even one or two of those would be, you know, excellent. The other possibility to consider is, and it's a very realistic possibility, is that they will look at studios that they already have and they might assign them to do a virtual reality game. They might make a team within that studio, split split the studio up, you know, make a virtual reality studio within Naughty Dog, for example. I don't think they will do that to Naughty Dog. They'd probably do it to a studio like Sucker Punch or something like that. Maybe that would make more sense for them. Maybe it would be more cost effective or whatever. Uh, I'd definitely be interested to see what, what would come of that, you know? I'd just be worried that it would be more of the, you know, Gorilla Cambridge story where if it's not a success straight away, you're done, no second chances. So yeah, those are my studios, those are my reasons, uh, but I'd be very interested to hear your thoughts in the comments below, whether I'm wrong or whether I'm like missing a very obvious choice that should definitely be a shoe in uh, And I will admit that there's a very high possibility that I'm forgetting a studio completely for whatever reason. So let me know about that in the comments below. Before I end this video, let me thank my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen as I speak. Thanks to their generosity, they're helping keep this channel nice and moist so I can make more videos like this. In particular, let me give a huge shout out to the following top tier Patreon supporters Pete Hawkins, Crumb, Chopped 517, Tradition, Daniel the Pumpkin Patch Kid, and Columbus Thomas III. Thank you for that generosity, it's very much appreciated. If you'd like to help me out, you can do so over at patreon.com forward slash petrifying pumpkins. The link to that is in the description below. But if you don't want to do that, if you just want to help out the old fashioned way with a like, comment, share, subscribe, whatever, that'd be greatly appreciated as well. Finally, let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music in all of my videos. You can check him out over on Decepticon.com. The link to him will be in the description below as well. And with that, I will end this video. Until next time, please stay moist. Moist. I said moist if you didn't understand what that was. Goodbye.